Looking to protect your cards? Whether you need sleeves, deck boxes, binders, playmats, or even backpacks, Ultimate Guard has your collection covered. Literally. Premium products offering priceless protection. Visit ultimateguard.com. Hello and welcome to another standard game to video. Today we're taking a look at a black-white tokens deck updated with Wiles of Eldraine, which introduces a ton of new cards to the archetype. One of the important ones is Virtue of Loyalty, which can first make a 2-2 Vigilant Knight at instant speed, and then later we can cast the 5-man enchantment, giving our team a plus one plus one counter each turn, as well as untapping them. So this is also kind of a two-drop. Then we also have two copies of the Devouring Sugar Maw, which I'm trying out. Can also first use the two-mana instant speed adventure, this time make a 1-1 human token and a food token, and then later we can cast a 4-mana 6-6 with menace and trample, but it does come with a drawback. At the beginning of our upkeep, we have to sacrifice an artifact, enchantment, or token. If we don't, we have to tap the sugar maw, but usually not too difficult to keep fueling the sugar maw in this deck. Also has a bit of synergy with a loyalty. If it does end up getting tapped, at least we can untap it to have it back on defense. And then at 2 mana we also have the full set of Regal Bunnycorn, which has power and toughness equal to the number of non-land permanents we control. So that includes all our creatures, but also our various artifact tokens, like the ones from Sugar Maw, our various enchantments, planeswalkers, you name it. And then another new addition from Wilds of Eldrain is Lord Skitter, a 3-3 legendary rat noble, saying at the beginning of combat on our turn we get to make a 1-1 rat token that cannot block, and whenever another rat enters we can exile a card from a graveyard. So that also gives us a bit of built-in graveyard graveyard hate. And then having a few black tokens from a Lord Skitter can also be incredibly useful when trying to convoke Pile On, which is one of the payoffs for being a tokens deck. We can easily tap three or four creatures to pay for convoke and then destroy target creature or planeswalker while getting to surveil two, which gives us a bit more card selection to find our next big play and can also potentially put a card like a Lunark Veteran into our graveyard. This is excellent as a one drop against the aggressive red decks that try to burn us out as we get to gain one life whenever not creature enters and then later we can also disturb it from the graveyard as a now flying creature that can maybe fly over any ground blockers to close out the game and any small creature is still going to turn into a pretty big threat when paired with our virtue of loyalty or with our wedding announcement which can pump out some 1-1 human tokens potentially draw cards as well and eventually transform into the wedding festivity to give the team a plus one plus one and then we've got some more token makers at 2 mana with resolute reinforcements, making two one ones at instant speed. And then at 3 mana, of course, Adlin can also apply a ton of pressure if it gets going, making lots of human tokens and growing in power as we have more creatures in play. And then at 4 mana, I'm trying out one Mondrak, which can double up our token production, which is quite nice in creature matchups where we don't need to worry about sweeper effects. And it's especially nice if we already have a token maker in play, like our various 3 drops, that way we get immediate value even if our opponent is holding removal. Can of course also make Mondrak indestructible if we've got a spare mana and some tokens laying around. Although the most popular sweeper in standard is Sunfall, which exiles all our creatures, so then Mondrak's indestructible is not going to be all too helpful. And then a two copies of the Wandering Emperor gives us another instant speed token maker. And the fact that we can make so many tokens at instant speed in this deck at least gives us a little bit of play against sweepers, as we've got our Emperor, Reinforcements, the Sugar Maw, and even Virtue of Loyalty all making tokens at instant speed. And then having a creature land to close out games against control is also quite helpful. This can turn into a 1-4 that drains the opponent for two, regardless of them blocking the fortress. And then I think we've mentioned most of it, a few more removal spells with two copies of Cut Down and two copies of Go for the Throat can also help out against other creature strategies. And then the mana base is pretty simple, lots of dual lands, the channel lands can also provide a bit more utility in the late game, but trying to keep things simple, as many untapped lands as possible, so we don't stumble against the popular mono red aggro. So that's our deck, now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Nothing super exciting here, but at least we can go wide. And then if we draw any of our Anthem effects or a, a Virtue of Loyalty down the line, we'll have an excellent board state. Well, let's see what we're up against. Turn 1 Mountain. Fortress is a turn late, but we'll find a window for it. For now, I want to play the Reinforcements. If our opponent keeps up two mana for, let's say, a lightning strike, then I could have gone for tap land, second reinforcements, instead of exposing Lord Skitter to it. 
now probably want to just get the three drop in play and then don't really mind taking two even though we could trade okay there's our virtual loyalty so for now play lord skitter and then next turn i could go tap land virtue or if i draw lands we've got a few more options Lightning Strike deals with Skitter. And Scoundrel still attacking. Wedding Announcement was excellent. So I think I still like drawing as opposed to making an extra token, so we'll attack all out. Fortress Announcements, and then next turn we've got quite a few options. With a land, could even go for the 5 mana enchantment. Veteran gives us some life gain, so could even go Veteran reinforcements and make a knight. So still at a relatively healthy life total against Monored with a decent board state, so I'm liking my chances. Virtue of Courage down to 13, now 11, and another announcement to draw. So maybe go Veteran plus another Wedding Announcements. I won't gain any life, but I'll get to draw two cards, which sets up our Wandering Emperor. Might be drawing too many cards as opposed to affecting the board. But we can always kind of hit the brakes and let the announcement make a token next turn. So I don't mind that. Still no fifth land. Although Mondrak's not bad either. Can just play it, no attacks, and make a bunch of tokens. Godric flying over is certainly a concern. So I'm considering jumping with Veteran, although next turn it would gain me a lot of life. So I'll still take it. Plus they could have a Monstrous Rage to give Trample, in which case blocking doesn't really do much. So if we play Mondrak and our opponent doesn't kill Veteran, we would gain 5 life total, 1 from Mondrak and then 4 from the tokens. Assuming I don't attack with more than one creature. So I think step 1 is just attack with a red token which cannot block anyway. It does seem like our opponent may have a burn spell in hand. Also have to count on Godric flying next turn, thanks to Kumano transforming. So I think the safest play is just pass with Emperor available, as opposed to relying too much on Lunark Veteran, but it does gain us two life here. So there's a Virtue of Courage now, 5 mana. Godric flies. If our opponent doesn't attack with Godric to play around Emperor, we could still make a couple tokens here. But our opponent's going for it. And now we're definitely in the safe zone. Opponent's at 11, so let's say they block one of my creatures. Have five of them going through. Can also get an extra plus one counter, so they would have to chump the only three powered creature. I don't think we block. So we don't quite have lethal since I didn't draw the land to animate fortress, which would have done it. But uh, yeah, having them chump seems good. We've got the edge in this fight. And then I can still make a bunch of tokens to gain life with veteran. So any reason to do it now or wait? I guess we'll wait. And there's line 5 at long last. Virtue of Courage does get to dig towards another burn spell here. So they could string together enough, but again with the life gain from Veteran, can gain 3 more here. And block Scoundrel, I'm not too worried. Okay, I guess Monstrous Rage is not bad here. 
Although we should have enough toughness to put in front of the scoundrel. Start with a virtue of loyalty. If they were to somehow burn veteran in response, I can then still gain two instead of the other way around. Opponent going for monstrous rage. Go for reinforcements and then put everything in front of it. Alright, so we're still at 7. The Lightning Strike is down to 4, so yeah, they were pretty close. Virtue finds another Lightning Strike with a land to play it, which would leave us at 1 exactly, so incredibly close one here. GG, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play, missing black mana. No 1 or 2 drops either is as good enough. Well, wedding announcement can right a lot of wrongs, and Adlin's not bad either. I'll give it a shot. If we either find black mana or something we can cast in the first turns, then this will be alright, so... That's a pretty big portion of our deck. Any of our token makers at 2 mana are also fine here. Right, I'll take a veteran. Facing black green, so mid-range. So don't have high hopes for Adelin surviving if I play it. So we'll go with the wedding announcements. Fortress is a bit late to the party. But can play the next turn alongside Adelin. Blind Green can have answers to enchantments. In the form of Glissa, in the form of... Potentially the... Uh, Terra Sunder instant. There's Glissa. Speak of the Devil. So for now I'm just going to have to play Adlin, probably jump Glissa with the token, and then next turn we'll have access to our black removal spells. And then we should have a pretty efficient turn coming up. Can maybe play Bunnycorn, tap it for Convoke, or just uh, Bunnycorn plus go for the throat. Just a Virtue of Persistence killing our Veteran, that's fine. Okay, another Black Source. So, if Adlin attacks they can just chump it with a Dread Knight admittedly, but still seems okay. Could also go Veteran, Bunnycorn, and then just attack with Adlin, and then still pile on with Convoke. Don't hate that idea. It looks like they have some removal. Shieldred's Edict. Sacrifice a non-token creature. Sadly, we don't have an instant speed reinforcements here to punish them. We get to Phantom, play Bunnycorn, and then I can still convoke Pylon, so I think that's the plan still. And then we can also deal with something like Shieldred if it shows up. Lord Skitter is going to try and fight our tokens with more tokens. Okay, I think we still have to go for Glissa first. And they can attack if they want. We get to surveil, and a virtue of loyalty is exactly what we're looking for. Something to go over the top. So, if I play it before attacking, Bunnycorn would be a 7 7, so they can successfully double block it. And then Phantom also gets to get in for 2. I suppose they could have a cut down for Phantom, shrinking down Bunnycorn, and then double block it. Would that be a disaster? It would be annoying. But I think I still have to attack. I 
Alright, Terra Sunder. That one's kind of unexpected since they could have used it a while ago in festivity. So maybe a recent draw. And then now they could double block Bunny Corn. Alright, so not what we wanted to see at all. Opponent is still at 20. And uh, yeah, they get to draw more cards here with the Dread Knight. At least we have a creature land to apply a bit more pressure, but now a Tortoise is going to get them to 7 mana very quickly for Virtue. And at that point, they're going to take over. This is a strange attack. Okay, so if I go for the throw, it's Tortoise. What happens? Opponent's still going to cast Virtue, but at least we get an attack in for 6. And then next turn, Fortress can also attack. And that's probably our best hope going forward here. They could also animate Restless Cottage to gain some life with a food token, but I imagine the enchantment's incoming. Okay. So get our damage in while we can. And then as the dust settles, our opponent's at 4. And they'll be able to get back Glissa or Tortoise, most likely. And Cottage is also an option. If they don't have anything else, we could still maybe get there next turn with the Fortress draining for 2. But yeah, if Cottage gets in there, opponent's essentially at 7. They can block a 2-2, or block Fortress most likely, and take 8, so that would be exactly enough here. So yeah, just gotta go for it. Alright, points at 2, one blocker. So it looks like we got there. Opponent can gain 3 and fall to minus 1 life. So very close one, and our creature lanes ended up being pretty important to get those last points of damage in. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Our hand seems keepable. Could use a few more lands. Keep up cut down, turn to either reinforcements or half for dinner. And we might be up against Esper Legends. Yeah, cut down, now costing 2 mana. We'll pass it back, probably still take out Thalia, which affects most of our spells. So, we can let them attack and cut down. They might have a second copy. Opponent may be considering Soaring City. No, just to make disappear to counter. Fair enough. So now we could play Lord Skitter. Immediately make a token. And then if we draw another Black Source, Sugar Maw is also quite nice alongside our Sewer King. Opponent's got to go for the throats. So quite a few non-creature spells getting taxed by their own Thalia. And uh, yeah, we could play Sugar Maw already, which I don't hate. And then next turn, play another Lord Skitter to keep up the pressure. And Danik. Okay. So Danik, I believe, also prevents us from exiling stuff with Lord Skitter. I will sack a rat. And then go to attackers. Our opponent could double block and then use Iganjo to finish off Sugar Maw after first strike damage, but now we have the Wandering Emperor available too. It is a little awkward because then I miss out on the rant from Lord Skitter, but we can still kind of reinforcements plus make a knight to use up our mana. And this way we play around 
I gain you a bit better. It would be a blowout, and yeah, opponent does go for a double block. So they would let first strike damage happen first, and then use I Ganjo. I guess they could also have a Soaring City instead, but given the double block, I think I Ganjo is more likely. And then now it's no longer going to work. Alright, opponent uses Igancho anyway, but yeah. Didn't really accomplish much. Opponent loses both creatures. Back of Denik. And a Rafine. So we have options. I could just flash in reinforcements here, so I have something to sack to the Sugar Maw. And then still play a Lord Skitter. Take our draw step. And Lord Skitter seems good here. As opposed to going Veteran plus make a Knight, which is also an option. And then Wandering Emperor could just make a token, but yeah, opponent has seen enough after that blowout. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a fine hand. I guess aggressive decks have got plenty of cheap plays. It looks like red-white, maybe tokens. I'll go with a veteran and then turn to can make a knight. Do have to keep the opponent's creatures in check in case of a convoked knight errant. But for now I'll take the one. Opponent might have their own reinforcements, which potentially plays into our 2-2 knight. Although they could also have the 3-drop uh, that pumps their team, the Recruiter. Opponent attacks. Opponent might have a Monstrous Rage to pump one of their creatures, but it would still be a trade. And then I don't think it really matters which one we block. That works. And a Skrelv is next. Okay, so probably time for a wedding announcements. Question is whether we want to draw or make a token. I think for now drawing is fine. Even their opponent could have another reinforcements here to ambush veteran. It's going to be better to make a token if that also enables a cheap Convoke on Pylon, if we can cast it for free, for instance. Opponent did have another Reinforcements. Nice, right, so if they have the Recruiter here, we're going to take a lot of damage. Although Mondrax is also pretty nice. The only drawback here is that we don't have any black creatures that we can tap for Convoke. So we wouldn't be able to go Mondrax, make a bunch of tokens, and then still Convoke Pylon. That's where having Lord Skitter is pretty handy. Opponents also playing with Jetmir, so they might have another one in hand. And yeah, they are certainly building up towards a huge board. So might have to keep up Pylon for Jetmir, although our opponent also has a Skrelv. So we'd have to cut down Skrelv and then Pylon, which I guess we could still do. And then we're ready to deal with Jetmir by first cutting down Skrelv and then piling on. And there's Jetmir, so I need to cut down now. And then we can let them attack. Set up some blocks and then take out Jetmir. Okay, so their team is going to shrink back down. Do we want to trade everything? I think trading as much as possible is probably fine here. And then do I want to go for the throat for maybe another Jetmir? Certainly reasonable. Next turn I could play Mondrak and then make two tokens with Wedding Announcements. 
Or I could go another announcement, keep up, go for the throat. Although given that we're trading off most of my stuff, maybe uh, that's not really a priority. And then for now play Mondrak. And still keep up some mana for the ability. And uh, sure, I guess we'll offer the trade. Could have started there, gives a double block we Emperor instead. I doubt our opponent's trading since they need their resources to set up powerful synergies like Jetmir. So now we've got a massive board. Virtue of Loyalty could be next. Alright, Knight Errant gives them some hope. But uh, they might have mistapped the Convoke, not going for two instead. Alright, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play with a decent hand. Turn one veteran, turn two can make some tokens. Turn three, got a few options. Facing turn one planes and Skrelv. So possibly a mono white aggro deck. Could also be green-white poison, so we can maybe ambush a Skrelf if it attacks. Opponent reconsiders. Okay, end of turn, make a token and a food. And then I could attack with both creatures. Although potentially runs into the 2-2... Uh, from Virtue of Loyalty. Could play Wedding Announcements or Lord Skitter, both are reasonable. Playing the Announcement before potential Thalia comes down could be relevant. Also, if they play the uh, Peacekeeper, naming Announcement would make both more expensive, so then it's nice to have a bit of flexibility. So, yeah, I'm tempted to just Wedding Announcement and then no attacks to play around a 2-2. Which they're somewhat likely to have, given that they didn't play anything else. Yep. Okay. So, get a 1-1. One, one. And then next turn, potentially deploy the Sugar Maw. Opponent passes. And, uh, yeah. Just go for Sugar Maw. And then next turn, we can start sacrificing tokens to get in for six. Opponent with another Virtue of Loyalty. So if they get to five mana, we're going to be in a bit of trouble. So we got to apply pressure while we can with our transformed announcements. We'll be able to attack into the 2-2 Knights. For now, Recruitment Officer could see a Convoked Knight Errant. Okay, sacrifice food token. Keep all my creatures. And then we can attack. Could consider sending in an extra token just to draw with Wedding Announcement instead of making extra creatures. Although I don't really mind going wide and then building up as many creatures as possible. And then I'm going for another announcement over Lord Skitter here. If her opponent wants to triple block, that's fine by me, but given the virtue of loyalty, that seems unlikely. So play another announcement, and then we can play reinforcements in the opponent's turn. So if her opponent has lane 5 for virtue of loyalty, we still quite wouldn't be able to get a profitable attack in. Except for the Sugar Maw. There's line 5. Okay, so we'll have to wait and see here. Hopefully we draw some removal. Something like a Wandering Emperor could also enable a good attack. Opponent actually going for Ossification instead. Pretty happy with that. They do get to answer Sugar Maw. But uh, now our other creatures can actually attack. Unless they've got a follow-up. Yeah, if they saw the reinforcements, they might have gone for Virtue of Loyalty instead. And 
then make sure to play Lord Skitter before attacking so we get it right. And attack. We're at 30 life, so Lunark Veteran doing a good job. So that still has him taking 10 damage. Could have animated Foundry as well, but that leaves him in a pretty precarious situation for next turn. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw with a keepable hand. And lots of two drops. Missing something to kind of play on turn three to optimally use our mana. But then turn four, if we draw land, we'll be able to double spell or play a Wandering Emperor. Turn one, Rafine's Tower. Doesn't bode too well for us. Our deck can struggle against control decks, spanking sweepers. And Rafine's Tower usually points in that direction. Could also be Esper Legends, more of a creature deck. Although it's also a deck that is spanking a few flying creatures that we don't interact with all that well. Okay, so could go for Bunnycorn, could play something at instant speed, which I think I prefer, just don't think Bunnycorn's likely to survive. So still nothing from the opponent, so let's make a knight. Cut down takes care of it. And Lord Skitter's next, so at least we found our 3-drop in the meantime. And then next turn we've got some options at instant speed as well. Which I think I prefer to just keep up for mana as opposed to playing a bunny corn and then flashing in a 2-drop. Because we have to keep Sunfall in mind. Also have to keep an opposing Wandering Emperor in mind, of course, which could exile Lord Skitter. Opponent getting excited to tap for mana. So, if our opponent has Emperor, exile Skitter, then I could go with Bunny Corn, and then take it from there, basically. Don't hate that. And there it is. So now with the exile Lord Skitter, I'm less... Afraid of a uh, Sunfall next turn. You're done. Double Bunny Corn might be a bit overkill, but it is an option. Just hope they don't have a Sunfall, pretty much. Alright, let's go for it. Wandering Emperor makes a Samurai, so... Might be another Emperor incoming instead. Also one of the better answers to a large Bunny Corn. Opponent passes, and uh, yeah, we'll just turn our creatures sideways. If they block a 1-1 one -one with a Samurai, I could play my own Emperor, or we can let it go. In case your opponent's keeping up a counter spell. if they play their own Emperor, then on Bunny Corn, then we could Emperor, give it plus one and first strike. Opponent blocks a right. So for now I'll say go to damage, I think. See if our opponent has a response. If they want to take 9. They do. Okay, in that case I'll just pass a turn. Can make tokens at instant speed. Opponent with a memory deluge now. Okay, so they're digging for a sweeper, I'm sure. Or maybe they just needed a fifth land. Avoid rend kills Bunnycorn, sure. And then, don't think I want to play Emperor in case our opponent has a counter. Would rather play two spells here. Could trade for my own 2-2. Two -two. Just so that the 1-1s can attack past the Samurai more easily. Or I could take it and then plan to use Emperor to attack past the Samurai, but then if our opponent still has a counter, that wouldn't work. So I think trading is acceptable now. And then before damage, it's probably a good idea to play another token maker so Bunnycorn doesn't die to a potential cutdown. And then between reinforcements, Sugar Maw. It's a close call. I guess Sugar Maw means I'll have a 4-drop that's not Wandering Emperor. 
and we won't have wasted the adventure. Even though that applies a bit less pressure than the extra 1-1. One, one. So Bonicorn cannot be cut down. Could still die to any number of other spells. Now is probably a good time for Virtue of Loyalty. We'll grow the Bonicorn some more and start growing the rest of the team. It's going to be the Whale putting Bonicorn on top. Do we want to redraw it? It's not a bad draw. It's not a great draw. I think now with Virtue of Loyalty I would rather find token makers instead of individually large creatures which the opponent can handle pretty easily with their spot removal. So I'll put it on the bottom. And yeah, if we can just keep providing a steady stream of token makers we should be alright. I'm barring a farewell exiling my enchantment. Opponent cuts down our tokens, so yeah. Played around it earlier by growing the bunny corn. Okay, so this turn we can Reinforcements and Wandering Emperor. Start by attacking. Opponent's got another one. If our opponent goes for Samurai, we can play our own Emperor. Now we'll make the token right away so it picks up a plus one counter. Same with the reinforcements, even though it exposes them to a sweeper. Another deluge, so yeah. Possible our opponent has a six mana sweeper in hand, but just missing the lines for it. A land is tapped, so at most a cut down here. So definitely expecting a sweeper next turn. So what's the best way we can set ourselves up to beat it? Probably not by playing Sugar Maw. Uh, Abandoned Mire can get back Bunny Corn. Emperor probably just goes for a plus one counter here. And then play another Virtue of Loyalty. And then does the reinforcements attack into the 2-2? Sure. If it trades, it means uh, Sunfall will make a smaller incubator token. Is this an Elspeth's Smite? No, March for zero. Fair enough. So now all of a sudden, a Sweeper wouldn't actually be all that bad. So maybe it's time for Sugar Maw after all. Hang on to the Abandoned Mire. Their opponent's got 7 mana here. They are facing lethal, but have to imagine they have answers. It's gonna be Jace. So, is that shrinking down a creature? Still wouldn't quite do it, so... They must have some other interaction here, or they're gonna dig for an answer. Because you yeah, have plus one counter from Emperor, would still give us nine damage. Now our Samurai does die to cut down again. So if they have another whale, I don't really want to put all my eggs in the Sugar Maw basket. But if I grow Samurai and they have a cut down, I'll be sad. Still have to go for it. Alright, let's see if they have some interaction here. Probably just another whale. First rank damage happens. And regular damage happens. Alright, so I guess they did not have any answers after all. Sweet, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. And uh, our hand seems keepable. Just need a third land and we're in business. Veteran into reinforcements. The life gain from Veteran making up for the pain land here. Yeah, against red aggro. Veteran's gonna be useful. 
gives of coil loss not so much. So hit for one. Question is whether we main phase our token maker to play around a burn spell on veteran. I think we'll wait since we might end up using go for the throat if our opponent plays, let's say, Felden here with a plus one counter. It's gonna be a charming scoundrel. Okay, we'll see if it goes for a wicked roll. If it does, I'll take it out. Goes for treasure instead. All right, I'll let that happen and then could just trade for a knight. I guess they could still have Monstrous Rage to pump Scoundrel, which would punish that play. But I think I'll still try it. Alright, planes is good. So now we can go for wedding announcements after getting in for one. And then Sugar Maw is going to be a nice way to stabilize if we get to it. Holding off most ground creatures. For now Godric with flying, thanks to Kumano. That's a good one. So likely have to go for the throat at next turn. Opponent attacks, I'll take it. So if I don't draw an untapped land, I could still attack to make that happen. And I think that's the plan. And then pass with the plan of killing Godric. Did not find a fourth land in the meantime. And there's Felden now. And a Swiss Spear. So Godric flies. There's also two Mishra's Foundries we'll have to worry about at some point. For now, still taking five. All right, land is useful. So now I'm thinking either Mondrak will cost us one life, but then will double the tokens from Wedding Announcement and gives us a nice beefy blocker. Or we could go with the uh, Adventure here as well as Reinforcements. I think Mondrak makes more sense. And then I'm just gonna chill on defense. They could kill Veteran in response here since we're about to make a lot of tokens. Alright, so now we go up to 10. And then next turn we can continue gaining a life, maybe even making a food token that we can immediately sacrifice. Another Godric is scary. And Swiss Spirit to enable Celebration, so that can hit me for 5 in the air. And they also send Felden, which I'll just block with a 2-2. Two -two. Don't want them digging 5 cards deep. I don't think. So I'm probably looking at the adventure to make a food token and gain life. But we'll see. If I draw land, then Lord Skitter plus 2 drop might still be better. Opponent found Invasion and Pit Fighter. And they did leave themselves with the treasure to still cast a 2 drop. And that's likely killing my veteran now. So no more life gain coming our way. Opponent actually saving it so they can maybe enable Celebration again. But in the meantime, we'll be able to gain some life. Could also Virtue of Loyalty, but just need to gain more life here. Yeah, I think Lord Skitter still makes sense over making a food and sacking it. And then the reinforcements doubled by Mondrank also, quite nice. Mondrank probably wants to attack now. Could also send a few other tokens. The rants don't block, but we still have reinforcements that can make more. And we want to try and turn the corner here. Points at 7. And then 
Opponent's going to try and exile veteran thanks to etching. Could also see them go face with it instead. Either way, we'll have three more life are ready to go. And then hopefully they can't enable celebration. So we'll see what they have to reveal, if anything. Three damage, put on top deck to Shivan Devastator. Wow. Yeah, that could potentially do it if they cast one X equals three. Seven coming my way. I guess we're still alive, but barely. Yeah, that was a great top deck. And kind of shows why our opponent held on to the invasion instead of killing Veteran right away. Opponent goes all out. Reinforcements keeps us alive and produces multiple blockers as well. So block here. Here could double block Swiss Spear. Take seven down to two and then can easily kill them on the way back. Get to see why Lunark Veteran is so important in this best of one meta. Awesome. Okay, we're on the play with a keepable hand. Bit of removal early. Turn three wedding announcements. And then the surveil from Pylon can dig towards more action. Hopefully we'll find something to do on turn two. For now, keep up cut down. Put on blue white. Adlin's not bad. Hopefully this is a soldier's deck instead of blue-white control. I guess Esper Legends here. Typically don't see Seacrum Coast in a dedicated control deck. So against Esper Legends, Thalia is a potential concern. And probably better to get the announcement going so Adlin can maybe immediately make a token. Although Vigilance creatures do pair well with Convoke. Opponents got their own Adlin. So let's see here. If I play Wedding Announcements, we get two more tokens and then I could pile on Adlin before our opponent untaps. Could wait for them to take their turn in case they have a shielded, but then they could also keep a plaza to protect Adlin. So I think we just immediately take out their legends. We could also play Adlin and do the same. What's better here? I think get another announcement going for now. Try and grow the team as quickly as possible. So we'll get two tokens. Tap three for Convoke. And then we get to Surveil two, digging towards another removal spell, maybe to answer Shielded. Okay, no removal. Lord Skitter's decent. But I can't really double spell with it next turn. Could go Veteran plus 3 drop, but I think we just dig towards maybe a Virtue of Loyalty to go over the top, or just removal. Even a land would be okay, since then we get to double spell Bunnycorn and Adlin. And then Veteran in Graveyard's also good synergy with uh, Pylon. Opponent does indeed have Shielded, and no answer to it. But uh, yeah, play Adlin and pass. And then we get to grow the team a bunch. Could have also attacked, but then shield is going to drain us. And then we would lose a creature in the process. So we are ahead on board, but now we have to worry about the various channel lanes as well. So for now, I think an all-out attack is still totally acceptable. And then play double bunny corn. Opponent might bounce Adlin with Soaring City, then we could replay it second main. And at least doesn't die to Iganjo anymore. It's gonna be Artai. Still trades for her 2 2 token here at least. So it destroys Adlin, triggers Shield Root as well. Finding reinforcements. So likely see them trade. And block another 2-2. Take 8. We'll get to draw another card end of turn, down to 12. So yeah, just double bunny corn. Although it's a close call with reinforcements, because 
giving the tokens plus two plus two means that they're substantial threats by themselves. But yeah, double bunny corn gets it done against Asper Legends. All right, so we got to see our black-white tokens in action. And yeah, overall, the deck certainly has game against a variety of archetypes. Against Monorads, if we're off to a quick start, especially with a live gain from Lunark Veteran, we can keep up. We've got a bit of spot removal as well, answers to some of the mid-range threats like Shieldred. Against Control, we can be in trouble if our opponents got a timely Sunfall, or especially Farewell, Exiling our Enchantments can be difficult to recover from, so those are going to be the harder matchups for black-white tokens. But yeah, overall I've been pretty pleased with how the deck turned out. Can still be fine-tuned according to what you expect to face in the meta, either increasing the number of late-game threats or removal spells, or potentially lowering the curve somewhat with more cheap creatures to fight the other aggressive strategies in the format. And then uh, I've also been pretty pleased with Pylon as a Convoke card, giving you those very efficient turns. Also potentially a reason to play a third copy of Lord Skitter, because black creatures especially are helpful with the Convoke on Pylon, since uh, that way we can potentially cast it for free, or we could look for some other black creatures we can play in the early turns to set up the free Convoke by just tapping four creatures. So yeah, that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day. I also want to thank all my patrons for being part of the channel, and you can become a patron yourself today and decide the topic of future videos over at patreon.com forward slash legendvd.